Hello class, this is Professor Morrison and this is your presentation on narrowing a research topic and creating a research question. When we are approaching our research project for the first time, the way that we begin is to select a topic. And it's going to be a very broad general topic and it's designed that way on purpose so that we can narrow it down and make it really interesting to us. Remember that you're gonna be working on this topic for the rest of the class. So it should be something that you find interesting and it should be complex enough to support however long your assignment is. Now you cannot just write about whatever you want. Depending on the assignment, it could be a theme from a literary work that we've been studying throughout the class, an element of popular culture, or another controversial topic but you need to make sure to look at the assignment instructions first, find the approved topic list or the list of themes, ask questions about which topic is correct to use if you're unsure, and remember, you may not write the same essay for more than one class. You must present original work for each class or it may be considered self-plagiarism. So even if you have a similar assignment in another class, you're still going to be writing two very different essays. We always start with a broad general topic and then we narrow it down. And in order to narrow it down, we kind of put on our journalism hat and we ask ourselves these questions, who, what, when, where, and why? This will help us to narrow our topic. Imagine that I have a list of approved topics and one of them is education. I would like to use this topic, but it's way too broad to write about the way it is. So I need to make it more specific and really narrow it down. So I'm going to follow that line of questioning and I'm going to use education as an example throughout the rest of the slides. And you should have your broad topic available and know what that is. And you should follow along as I go through and you should generate a list of nouns or noun phrases that you're going to use as your pre-writing to form a pool of details that you're going to mix and match to narrow your topic and create your research question and use as keywords in your preliminary research. So you wanna make sure to fill your pages with many words that may be helpful to you as you move to the next steps. The first question we always ask is who? Who is affected regarding this topic? And really just brainstorm as long a list as you possibly can of nouns. So you might wanna ask yourself age groups, socioeconomic class, geographic relation to each other, anything that applies to your topic. And so if I'm looking at education, I might say, well, who's affected? Students come to mind. And then age groups, don't just write all, you need specific nouns and noun phrases. Your, your preliminary search isn't going to work if you just write in students. You have to be a lot more specific than that. So I'm going to make a list, children, youth, teenaged, young adult, middle-aged, elderly, anybody could be a student. How about instructors, K through 12, community college, four-year university, and definitely administrators. So take a moment and write yourself a nice long list of who for your topic. Okay, you should have a very nice long list of who for your topic. And we're going to move on to our next question, which is what? And you wanna ask yourself, what are some of the topics being discussed regarding your topic? So if I'm looking at education, I would think about the different subjects that are being taught. And there's very different ways to teach every subject. English, math, science, art, history, government, athletics, music. There's a very long list. Now, if you wanted to Google your topic or look at Wikipedia just to see what some of the trending subjects are, you could do that, but you would never ever use those sources in your essay. They're just for brainstorming right now.
Okay, do you have a nice long list of what's for your topic? Good. Now the next question is when? And you want to ask yourself which time frames are interesting. Are you looking at now and into the future? Now and right before now? Are you looking at history? How about you pick a starting point because otherwise, believe me, you're going to be going down that rabbit hole for a long time. Pick a starting point. Comparison between two time frames? Pick two. Don't go more than two because, again, you don't have enough pages to write about that and it will take a long time. So if my topic is education, I might look at current day and future predictions and the trend of online learning. Um, history, maybe I could look back 10 years. Comparison between time frames, you know, the 1950s and now, or the 1980s and now, or something like that. So take a moment and write down some possibilities of wins for your subject right now. Okay, how about where? We need to be really specific again. Where is of interest to your topic? And really think about it. Give your brainstorming a chance to develop a long list of details. So if I'm looking at education again, I might say North America, South America, Europe, developing nations, anywhere, really. Now it's your turn. Okay, now we've come to the most important question which is why why is this matter worth researching what's going on you know behind the scenes with this topic and there are five different categories below and you need to brainstorm at least one answer for each of the five areas so using education here's my example causes why is education primarily online for now and into the near future don't answer your question just put the question there Effects. How will online education be received in different learning environments? Results. What are the benefits or concerns of continued online education as a primary form of instruction? Strategies or treatments, depending on your topic. What are different strategies to provide effective online education? And what about outcomes, long-term effects of primarily online education? Your turn, one of each. Okay, now it's time to mix and match your W's as if they were puzzle pieces. You have this pool of details that you have formed and now you're gonna draw from them and mix and match your W's to develop at least three narrow topics that are unique from each other, they're different from each other and they're complex. And be sure that there are at least three W's in each of your narrow topics. And so here, let's look at some examples of narrow topics from education, the example I've been going through in this presentation. Effects of long-term, primarily online education on young adults in America. We have a why, what, who, and where. Different strategies for online learning in K through 12 classrooms in California. Why, what, who, and where. Popularity of online learning in Europe and America for the past 10 years. What, where, and when? Impact of online learning on the testing rates of children in North America. What, who, and where? So put together some narrow topics using at least three W's in each narrow topic. Remember, these are not sentences yet. They're narrowed topics. Okay, now that you have your narrowed topics, it's time to create the research question. And no pressure, but the research question is the most important part of the entire research project. It shows what you already know, what you want to know more of, and it guides your preliminary research. So your thesis statement will be the answer to your research question. This is why we never use yes or no questions. A thesis statement is so much more than yes or no. It needs to be complex. And so we definitely want to make sure that we're beginning our research questions with what, how, or why. I suggest creating one of each. You need to make sure that you have backups. When you go to do your research, you may not find what you're looking for for that first or even second research question. You've got to have at least three. 
So here we have some examples of research questions that I've taken from my narrowed topics and started with what, how, or why. So take your narrowed topics, put what, how, or why in front of them and create a question. That's grammatically correct because you're actually going to begin your research paper with this question. What are the predicted effects of long-term primarily online education on young adults in America? How are different strategies for online learning in K-12 classrooms in California being implemented? Why has there been popularity of online learning in Europe and America for the past 10 years? What is the predicted impact of online learning on the testing rates of children in North America? Your research questions should follow these models. If you have any questions, please let me know. Once you've narrowed your broad topic and created your research questions, it's time to move on to the next step, which is evaluating sources.